All right, everybody, the referendum count has just started. Make yourselves comfortable. It looks like we could be in for a long night. Australia has voted no. It's all over. <laughs> it's dead? Only 39% voted yes. That should have been enough. I got 33% and I won government. Look, don't panic. Why don't we just legislate it instead? No, it's dead. Someone here killed my precious voice referendum and I'm gonna get to the bottom of it. Was it you, Adam Bang? Don't you dare. I put a yes sign out like everyone else in my inner city electorate. Who was the strongest yes vote, by the way? Unlike Bernie's electorate. I couldn't have been my fault. I stuck to the script. Unlike Noel, you told him it was about treaty. So did you. At least I said treaty was the second door. Wake up. It was Marsha who called no voters racist and stupid. No, I called their argument racist and stupid. There's a really, really big difference. Besides, Pat and Megan spilled the beans on the Uluru Statement being 26 pages. The first page still summed up the agenda anyway. Yeah, and let's not forget Thomas let the cat out the bag for the rep Operations, pay the rent and punish and politicians. Don't point your finger at me, Auntie Pat. It's obvious who killed the referendum. Misinformation. That's Mrs. Information to you. I had nothing to do with it. Besides, the media's been awfully quiet over there. We should blame all the dinosaurs and heads at Sky. I did my best, Ray. It was the ABC that let us all down. P Kenny, we were perfectly obedient. The AEC weren't nearly as biased for my liking. We're a statutory authority. We had to appear impartial. Unlike the private sector, I'm looking at you, Qantas. Oh, diddly dee. So all those yes stickers and free flights, that's what killed it. No, it couldn't have been my best friend, Alan. Hmm, there's only one person left to blame. You know what? Maybe you're right, Thomas Mayo. Maybe I should have been a bit more upfront. Maybe I should have negotiated bipartisan support and released some draft legislation and been less arrogant and supercilious or dismissive. Maybe it is my fault. Maybe I shouldn't have treated Australians as stupid. Or it could have been Pauline Hanson's fault. Oh yeah, yeah, it's Pauline Hanson's fault, yeah! 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 Let's get her! Gang, time to get our revenge. Put the pitchforks down. Ah, oh, but someone needs to pay for the voice failing. Someone already did. The taxpayer. $400 million wasted. And billions more is wasted every year on an Aboriginal industry that continues to fail Indigenous people. The voice of all Australians has said, enough. The answer is not more spending, it's better spending. It's accountability and responsibility. That's all. It's a modest request, a generous invitation. Okay, okay. You're right. Maybe I should focus on the plights of all Australians. The cost of living, the housing crisis, immigration. No, not another melodramatic speech. Pull your head in and get to work, Albanese. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Sorry, Miss Senator Hanson. Sorry. Well, after all that, I need a standard drink. Lucky I've got this Christmas spirit gin we brought back this year. And now that referendum's over, the cartoon series is taking a little break. But thanks to your support, we will be back before the end of the year. <laughs> you beauty! On your point! Thanks, Bob. Cheers, Australia. Authorised by D. Huxium for Pauline Hansen's One Nation Brisbane.